you have any weapons, any guns? The best, but we won't need them. I'm glad to hear it. I want one anyway. Migos were a little before my time. Uh, technically, they weren't. I had the Pocket Heroes, Spider-Man, Hulk, Green Goblin, and I had the Duke Boys, Bo and Luke Duke, in their car. I also had two 8-inch Migos of Bo and Luke Duke. But that was as close as I ever got to the classic Mego doll, the, the action doll with the clothes and the, you know, goofy expressions and the articulated bodies. They are popular among Gen Xers, like myself, but it's largely because most of them had older brothers who were earlier Gen Xers who had them. Uh, but anybody like me that grew up in 78 that was the oldest kid in the family really didn't have much experience with Migos after, you know, 1981 because the company folded. Rusquatch Gould, our resident Mego expert on the Facebook page, asked us if we would do a how-to on how to restring Mego Type 1 bodies because he said there wasn't a good video reference online. So he sent us a Mego and we're taking up the challenge. I've got a diagram off MegoMuseum.com. It's a very active forum for Mego collectors and enthusiasts and they have a diagram for how to restring these characters. Rusquatch sent us a Cornelius from the Planet of the Apes line, which is kind of cool because I really like Roddy McDowell and I really like that movie. So the random chance that he would send me Cornelius from Planet of the Apes is really awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is get the old string out of the Mego body. These characters tend to look a little obscene when they're stripped down. You have to remove the head and the Mego heads are, they're squishy. So you want to make sure that you pull the head out of the body gently so as not to rip the post off of the head. But we've done that successfully. And now we are going to get rid of this 40-year-old string in here that's holding on by a wing and a prayer. So here we go. And the string is cut. And the character is a part. I was watching Michael do this from behind the camera, and he wasn't having a lot of success. It's kind of like the Millennium Falcon. Uh, he wasn't really able to manage the string on that either. So I'm going to take over this one um, because I'm pretty good with sewing and strings and that kind of thing. So let's see how successful I am. There are several different ways that this is diagrammed online to, to string thread. I don't think it necessarily matters as long as you make sure that all the parts are connected and facing in the correct direction and you have a good tautness on your string. Now this is the string again that we took out of the original Mego and I'm going to leave this string actually quite long because um, I want to have plenty of room to play with. You're going to trim off the excess at the end. So the method I'm going to use is going up through the waist and out the arm. My Migo is trying to help me. So you'll want to go through the pelvis and there's a peg here. So we'll get back to that in just a second. So this is sort of an important part. First of all, I, I've chosen the method of going and doing the arms first and then I'm going across ways so that this arm and this leg are sort of connected by this diagonal string. And then when I come back up here, I'm going to make sure I go over the top of this peg. So I'll show it to you from this angle. You don't, what you don't want to do is you don't want to take this, I'll, I'll do it the wrong way. So you don't want to go this way. You want to make sure you come back up over the top of this peg. And the reason for that according to folks online, is that it prevents the spread leg syndrome. All 
right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to see if this is going to be... It looks like it should be firm enough. Give it a few So now we just have to trim the remaining string off of this and online it recommends using nail clippers. I think that's probably a wise choice. So I'm going to grab those. That way you don't accidentally cut something you're not supposed to. So I'm just going to go right, right here near the knot. There you go. So just to finish this off, we're gonna reassemble uh, our little guy here. We're gonna put his head back on and give him his outfit and he'll be all ready to go. So again, with these heads, you just kind of have to gently work them back onto the body. You want to make sure this little ridge gets on the inside. It's just like a My Little Pony. Just as stubborn as a My Little Pony, too. There. Planet of the Apes meets Men in Tights. Plumber's crack. Our friend Russ didn't have the shoes to go with this toy, so we had to um, get those online. Now, his shoes come in this lighter brown as well as a darker brown. And another thing you want to be sure to notice is that a lot of repros are floating around out there for Mego toys. So you want to be really diligent in asking the sellers that you're buying from if you're buying shoes in particular. Um, to make sure that they're not repros if, if you care about that sort of thing. Um, I don't know of a definitive way to tell. I know that there's sometimes an R stamped on the repros, um, I guess from uh, people who are trying to be honest. So what have we learned from this? Besides the fact that I can't string anything together, whether it's a Millennium Falcon remote or Amigo toy. Well, we've learned that you need to use an excess amount of elastic so that you can pull that knot tight when you get to the end of the path. You also want to use nail clippers instead of scissors so that you don't accidentally cut your work apart. Then you want to make sure that you use that post properly when you're threading. You don't want to go under the post in the abdomen, you want to go over it. Because if you go under it and you pull everything taut, the legs are going to be spread and you're never going to be able to get that Mego to stand up in a display case. And then you want to make sure that you don't get repro parts if that's important to you. Don't be afraid to offend a seller by asking. It's your money and you need to protect it. You also need to protect the credibility of your collection. So what are we going to do with this guy? Well, Russ, you were kind enough to donate it to us. And so Cornelius is going to go into the Retroblasting Archive. And I think I'm going to put him in the display case for a while. So thanks for watching this restoration, everybody, and have fun. Mm -hmm.